uh, important uh, uh, commitments in the Vatican. Also, both of them are involved in the state policy making. So I'm very proud of both of them. Welcome, Sister Sujita. Welcome. You know what is coming to my mind, Matthew 15. They said, Jesus looked at the crowd. He had compassion on them. And so he fed them. But what's happening to me, I have compassion on us because we are overfed. So on top of that, I don't want to add to your misery, and I'm told I have only a few minutes, so let me uh, mess up with this because I have to jump over. And also, I'm telling you, I worked so, I lived with the poor in their huts for many years with nothing. I know what it means to be the last. So sometimes being the last, everybody has finished and all are thinking of their stomach and their tickets, flight, I do not want to persecute you. So I will just skip through. I have everything, but I'm not going to because there is no way at this time we can take what we want. Okay? Uh, the, I, I think already um, Luis has very well explained already the importance of the gospel reading. Um, it helps us to see the urgent needs of recasting not only formation but religious life itself. And we've been saying this for years. Sometimes, you know, I also feel, uh, you know, it seems uh, they uh, uh, in a meeting they kept on talking and talking and talking. One old sister from behind got up and said, "Damn it, and do it." She was so angry, and she walked off. I think we are at a stage now, let's do it. it. You know, we are talking the same thing in different, different, different languages, women's perspective, men's perspective, everything. So I'm not going to read this, nothing, it's all over. I will simply, I cannot jump without I have to go through. Um, so one thing I feel as formators and formies, we, I, by the way, what I am going to say is not anything new. I am just recapturing what you have said, the different speakers have said. What can we take from this and run with it to see, can we do something from any of these points, make some, re, re, we were planning a very good session, which we cannot do, where we would have planned for the next one year, three years, that's not going to do. So I will just give back to you a summary of the points that emerged. And my hope is, at least in your own groups, you'll work out something concrete. Otherwise, we have wasted the money and time. So at least something that we will work out. And later on, we'll come back and see how we are doing and help each other. So, so the... Um, the question was already asked, our true identity. I think we too have an identity crisis, not only for me, for me, it's religious life itself. So I'm not reading, that's all finished. Uh, but very interestingly, I found this CRI statement. It necessitates a restructuring of formation in mission. Formation institutionalized structures and programmed lifestyle runs the risk of prepa preparing alienated religious and priest for mission. Look at the year, sisters. Nine and father, they, uh, 1991, and we are still saying the same thing. Yeah. Then uh, a modern theologian, well-known theologian, Sandra Schneider, she says, if religious life and therefore formation is to be energizing experience for those who living it, make sense to those observing it from outside, and be attractive option for the young contemplating it, then serious rethinking needs to be done. So I'm really saying this because it's not only an Indian issue, it is a whole global issue. 
we cannot go on doing what we are doing and still make sense to ourselves, do justice to our call, because we are stuck. And who will, who will bell the cat? Something has to be done. Uh, now, this, this is a summary. I'm only giving back to the summary. I'm not saying anything new. Some of the things are what will help us to have this roadmap? Reading the signs of the times from the gospel perspective. It's very important. World realities, Indian realities, teachings of Pope uh, Francis, the stirrings of the spirit within the church globally and here. That will guide us. Rereading our congregational charism and mission and priestly vocation in today's context. The question is what, even for religious, not what our uh, founding mothers and fathers did. What would they do now? They were men and women of their times and we keep on holding on them like they cannot be changed. They will be men and women of today. How have we done that with our charism and spirit? The identity and background of the young men and women, Generation Z or Z, who are attracted to this life of priesthood. This is another big factor we really have to study. The challenge of our current formation structures, systems and processes. We are trying to, what, as they say, have the cake and eat it. We want the security, the structure, everything as it is. Still we talk about doing this. Henry Nouwen says, you are not what you think. You are not what you say. You are not what you write. And it's very much true because it, we get satisfaction by using the vocabulary, highfalutin expressions, we think that's what we are. We are not. And we, we are really challenged to get down and do something to make a difference. Then other factor would be, of course, formation of formators. They also need initial and ongoing formation, such a fast-changing scenario. Then the key issues that emerge from all the input, so many issues, so many talks. But I think since our focus is on Francis, for Francis, I centered on what he is also teaching us and leading us. So these are the issues that came, some strongly, some only mentioned, vocations to priesthood and religious life, call to holiness, call to the peripheries, synodality, new humanism, care for creation, inter-religious dialogue, gender justice, twice I heard, but I put it because of major issue. Uh, then focus on vocations, are we looking for numbers or for women who are or men capable of being spiritual and disturbing prophetic presence in our today. I think we have to say mea culpa, many of us are going for numbers so they can be prepared for our institution survival. I don't think our whole focus is creating disciples who are prophetic. I don't know what will change, but we have to be honest about this frantic search for vocations. Doesn't matter, like the man in the gospel, bring them from the highways and highways and anywhere, but we have to fill our novitiates. So we have to really see, there are wonderful young people. I believe in the youth, but we need certain discernment more than what we are doing. So let us not make formation so easy and so comfortable that the formi forgets the very purpose of his or her yes to God. For, uh, formation must nurture prophetic sting, which is inherent, a prophetic sting that is inherent in our call. It is said one old lady brought a cat because the mice were running in the house, poor thing couldn't catch, went then brought a cat. As soon as the cat came, started running around catching the man, uh, mice. One day it rained and the lady thought, poor little kitty, put the kitty in, the, in her lap and started feeding, kept on feeding. After about a week or two, one mice came and the lady is saying, go kitty, go, go. The kitty goes, mm -hmm. And so, don't want to go anymore. So we are doing sometimes, we, uh, the kitty forgot its cattiness. It's meant to be a cat, not a baby, not a pet. So same thing sometimes, the formation and take away that prophetic sting, that prophetic audacity that is hidden in the hearts of the youth. 
it is there. So this is something to think about, not a cat in the lap. The making of a disciple takes the asceticism and perseverance of a lifetime. Jesus did not say, take up your ice cream and follow me. Take up your cross. So there is definitely a hard ascetical reality. Don't let us know. Soft toys cannot live this life. And I don't blame the youth. I blame the formators who are not able to provide that. They, young ones are ready for challenge. They have tremendous gifts. I believe in that. But are we releasing the potential within the young people? Okay, I will go on. Then one word about motivation. I want to say motivation be, uh, can be elusive as it can be created, changed, or deepened or lost. Even if a person did not have motivation, if the ambience is good, he or she is fascinated by the love, the openness, the freedom, the prayer of the group, the person will decide to join. So don't blame motivation alone. Motivation can be created by the atmosphere. I know of people who came only for a few days. I know of a sister in my group came to reach her younger sister, but she stayed on, she became a better sister and the younger sister left. So motivation is, can be dependent. Uh, then discerning the vocation, because we know vocation is a mistake, okay. Now, this is also very important. It came again and again. No, understand and welcome Generation Z for me. They are not a threat. They are a blessing. They know their energy, experience, knowledge, interest, spirituality, aspiration, their skills, their motivation, their dreams, their strength, their shadows, their feeling of... But this also you have to pay attention. Somehow the generation feel the oldies, don't listen to them, don't take them seriously, don't understand. That also we need to address. We have to be humble enough to look at ourselves. Then the second big theme that came was called to holiness. Many have spoken, so I will go. I will not read any of this. Um, but the Vita Consecrata says the primary objective of formation is to prepare people for the consecration of themselves to God, the following of Jesus and at the service of the mission. And uh, I was one of the uh, organizers of that uh, International Congress on Consecrated Life to, uh, 2004. Beautiful, passion for Christ, passion for humanity. Beautifully brought out whatever you say. 20 PhDs cannot mean anything if there is no passion for Jesus, a fire within us. That fire alone will sustain Vocation will, to, will do prophetic things. It will attract others. You know, remember what Gandhiji said, you Christians talk too much. Be like the rose. Be like the rose. It attracts without saying much. So perhaps it's a huge question. That passion for Christ, that love, that transformed self will attract not only vocations, it will attract even, even the Hindus who are not for us. I often say the only thing nobody can steal from us, BJP can take our institutions, they can stop us, our FCRA, they can do everything. What they cannot touch is the witness of our life, being Christ-like. They cannot stop me from being Christ-like, compassionate, humble, listening. That they can't take. Maybe that may be the only weapon we have right at the moment. So can we really grow in that? that whoever will see you, whoever will listen to you, you see that I didn't get 10 minutes. This is peripheralization. <laughs> okay, I think I, I'm not even one third of what I have to say, but you know, good religious, so I have to be obedient, you know? But uh, I, I feel very bad because I have a lot of points towards the end which I don't think, okay. Anyhow, my theory is all spirituality is relationship. I believe in this totally. And I, I challenge my patients uh, for me, tell me one thing that doesn't come within this four relationship. So making for me is very relational, relational people. 
how can you talk about relationship in our own maybe in our communities in our seminaries other places you can't even sit together and talk what we really think afraid you are afraid of each other how can you have a formation anywhere so i would challenge all of us create ambience where relationships are primary you talk what you think you respectfully listen to the other without this is a beautiful practice of spiritual conversation we talk about and we don't have the ambience of to speak what is in my heart in my mind and so we are getting caught up in nitty gritty little things the nation can burn the poor can die the migrants can be going anyway it doesn't matter to us we are caught in our relationships worries little things a beautiful consecrated energy for the mission of jesus is wasted because we are not cleaning our own house we are not men and women of synodality communication participation mission i really say, i'm saying we is a area we need to clean our house first make our house beautiful for for me for meters where we feel this is a temple of the lord then we can take it outside when we don't leave what authority we have jesus spoke with authority only because he was doing what he was saying and i think we cannot speak with authority until we address these things i will i think i have <laughs> no time okay call to mysticism prophecy okay let me see i will just go i had a lot of other things no let it be i think i will just call it. ah maybe my last slide <laughs> what to do ah, oh sorry i want to say something about this i chode this as i say i am a bihari chodenge nahi isko okay this is a uh, formation must address gender sensitivity this very little it is coming uh, because uh, it's not a ma- it is not a god made thing no it is it's our own make and we can change it personal conversion <laughs> here i want to i want to say something about here mm, see sorry everything changed ah i i just want to say you see the answer to this whole gender issue lies in our own role so i want to say that there is need for the presence of women in the formation of priests and, and in their spiritual accompaniment we must be men and women must feel at home with one another my goodness see that freedom with responsibility and maturity very important um there is often mutual uneasiness a difficulty in establishing equal relationship and the seminarians must interact with the women in natural way just as you know, the formis women religious also and also to face the challenge that the presence of women and the attract attractions we feel no problem it is perfectly um, all right but what i am afraid is if that is not done when a priest is ordained he goes to a parish there is a sister who is maybe uh, some 60 70 years old with a lot of experience in no time her experience has no value a presence has no value she set aside i think it's not anybody's ill will it's like a preparation for working with women as equal synodality goes out of the window participation goes somewhere else so it's absolutely important working with women as equals not as you say we do we say you do no so this is something i wanted to emphasize but let it be maybe maybe some day afterwards okay i think i <laughs> I like their one thing I yeah, yeah, this one you have to see you have to see women in the church are more important than bishops and priests I didn't say holy father <laughs> holy father said I don't know you can check with him huh? uh, by the way I had the joy of being this holy father for 27 days in the bishop synod uh, as uh, I participated and uh, he was not like this he was very different but yeah okay thank you ah next one <laughs> ah this also i have a doubt 
what are the seminarians singing about you know we are on gender is god mother for you is god father for you if not if is only father there is a problem i want to show you the problem ah uh, god is then what happens if is god is only father then all the fathers become gods you understand if god is only father all the fathers can become gods we have to be careful huh? yes yes just a word from an old sister gender discrimination is socially learned power is learned culture is learned then all these can be unlearned replaced with the heart and mind of christ this is formation what we learn we can unlearn and become like christ okay oh right oh dear what ongoing formation my dear sisters i had something nice on it but i cannot uh, accompaniment i want at least show you the word even though i cannot speak ah uh, okay this is something such as uh, i have to say because i know i know i am being disobedient but there are some things please check the curriculum and see do you do we have these kind of things in the curriculum kind because we can't have a workshop now so i'm asking you know some of these things must become part of our curriculum in formation kindly sorry for doing this sisters but i think this i am a formator also for you know i i prepare the sessions for so many years these are very important things okay all right sisters my goodness okay i <laughs> i sir